Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. How do you do, friends? I greet you in the name of the Lord with a prayer and a hope that all is going well with you. And if not all, I wish that most, or at least, <laughs> that the things you need to happen to you and in your life are happening through the grace of God. Praise God. Well, we are ready to go for another time in moments in the world. Yes. And we are glad we have you with us. Thank you, Lord. May the presence of the Lord be Hallelujah. strong with us and may his blessings be plenteous. I pray that your needs will be met. Yes. And the blessings of the Lord will multiply to you yes, and yours. And yours. Yes. <clears throat> pray, pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this moment and the opportunity we have to come to you and to meet with you. Hallelujah. We know, God, it is your good pleasure to bless us as we come. Yes, Lord. So we ask you to meet with us Allow your Holy Spirit yes. to pour upon us the blessings which are necessary for this moment's meeting. Yes, Lord. And we give you thanks yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and everybody say amen. Thank you for joining us for Moments in the Word. It's another opportunity that the Lord has given us and we regard it as a blessing. A blessing to be able to speak and a blessing to be able to hear. And I hope that you will receive the word with gladness as we share this time around. Okay, we are going back to the book of Revelation. And we have been dealing with the churches in Asia Minor. We are now at number three. And the third message given by the angel to John, to this church, was Pergamos. The church was Pergamos. And you know, it is always good to um, have a little history or understand something about a district or a city or a church. So let's check a little bit on the history of um, Pergamos. It is said that Pergamos was the official capital of the Roman province of Asia. Interestingly, Pergamos means thoroughly married. Thoroughly married. I know some thoughts come to your mind as you hear the word married. One commentary said that Pergamos was um, thoroughly married to the cults and to emperor worship. So they weren't married to something that was good. They were married to the cults and to emperor worship. So you can imagine that it was hard to get them out of that. Ah, it became the center for the uh, imperial religion with its blasphemous emperor worship. They built many altars and had many cults. And that's why the Lord referred to that place as Satan's seat. The city's chief god was Aklip Pius, whose symbol was a serpent and who was considered the god of healing. And people went to Pergamos from all over the world, then world, to seek healing from this god. Thank God we have one true and living God who is present here, there, and everywhere. We ain't have to go nowhere to find him right where you are. Are. Hallelujah. We don't have to go over yonder to seek for our God. And somebody say hallelujah. He is the omnipresent one. Now this is the place where God's church was firmly established. Thank God for that. However, Christians there faced strong temptations from the pagan worship that surrounded them. Let's look at the message that was sent to this church. And this is how it began. 
I know thy works and where thou dwellest. Let's say that together. I know thy works and where thou dwellest. People of God, the Lord, the God whom we serve knows our works and we dealt with that in previous um, lessons and he also knows where we live and the conditions of the places where we live he knows the environment he knows the culture and all the existing circumstances in which his people live and he knows who lives where we live all the people around us, yes. He's not ignorant of the fact that his church is in the midst of a non-Christian world. Yeah? So, I say to you, be encouraged. We are not alone in this thing. And stand fast in your God. Because hear what the word says. He's able to keep us from falling. He's able to preserve us in the fire. He can shield us from all evil. Praise the name of Jesus. I am so glad that in the midst of paganism, the church at Pergamos thrived. My friends, we can thrive wherever we are because God's grace and power are sufficient for us. Hallelujah. Now, what are the commendations? It's a kind of pattern. The churches first, before um, the Lord condemn them, he always commends them. Now, Christ commends his church for remaining faithful in the midst of such satanic influences. Let's look what the word says. Thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. In the midst of paganism, they held fast to their faith. And God had to commend them for that. Yes, man. They refused to deny Christ. This is a great example of commitment and steadfastness in Christ. Hear what the verse says in the closing um, lines. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr. So they had pagan worship and they had martyrdom right in that little church there. Oh my God. So it was one thing to live in a place where demon worship was prevalent. But now to add to that, they martyred Antipas. And Antipas, we are told, was a bishop of the church. And they, they, they killed him in a terrible way. History says that he was enclosed. He was put in a, in a burning, brazen bull and put to death. So they made a bull out of brass, I suppose. Opened the inside of it, put him in there, lit it up in, on fire. Oh my God. And put the servant of God in that burning, brazen bull. That have, must have been, a, have been a terrible experience for God's servant. But guess what? He gave his life as a testimony of the power of Christ. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord says that the believers in Pergamos stood fast in their faith. Praise the name of Jesus. And I just wonder, can God commend us for our faithfulness in the midst of a hostile society? In the midst of all the evils around us, in the face of death, I tell you, it's going to call for a real commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to call for a real separation from the world and from worldliness. May God help us. There are thousands, millions who have gone through all kinds of evil in our world, and they have made it. So I believe we can make it also. All right, that was a commendation. Now we go to the condemnation. I'm going to read verses 14 and 15. That's Revelation chapter 2. 
All right. So he says, but I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that um, hold the doctrine of Bale, Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Right. There are four things mentioned here which Christ condemned. Yes, they were holding the doctrine of Bela. They were eating things offered to idols. <coughs> they were committing fornication. And they were holding the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. My God. Let's look at these now. First, there were some in the church who were holding on to the doctrine of Bela. Now, what is this doctrine? You probably remember how that Balak, who was a king, who feared the large number of Israelites traveling through his country, hired Balaam to pronounce a curse on the Israelites. Well, Abram, no, not Abram, Balaam refused at first. <clears throat> but guess what? Balak offered him money, offer, bribed him. Is it bribe? Yes. He bowed to that offer and changed his mind. I want you to read Numbers chapters um, 22 to 24 to get the gist of the story. And could I tell? Yes. So, I was going to summarize something there because Balaam yes. was probably who we would call a do-good man. <laughs> <laughs> he work up something for persons according to their needs. Okay. So Bela heard about him. Yes. And sent for him. Mm -hmm. But when the messengers went, Bela refused to go. Right. Claiming that he could not go to curse, curse right. the people of God. Mm -hmm. But when the messengers went back to Bela, mm -hmm. he said, well, let me send some gifts. Right. And more money. Mm -hmm. So, when he got the second offer, he decided, okay, I will go. Oh, my God. So, when he got to Balak, mm -hmm. and Balak told him what he wanted, he said, well, it's a tough thing, but he will do it. <laughs> so, he went to the mountain, offered some sacrifices. Yes. And when he started... To say something like in my own words now, I curse Israel. Oh, yeah. Instead of saying I curse you, yes. he said I, I bless, bless you. you. <laughs> so Balak said, man, that's not what I pay you to do. Oh my God. And he would say, well, this mountain is not high enough. Yes. So take me to a higher, higher mountain. mountain. <laughs> and he went to the higher point. Yes. And then... He started again, mm -hmm. but he pronounced a blessing oh, instead, of a, instead curse. of a curse. Right. <laughs> so when Balak said, you, you do the same thing. Yes. He said, I can't curse from here. Yes. I have to go to another, another spot. <laughs> so when he went to the third spot, oh God. He started out and again is blessing instead of cursing. Cursing, right, right. So he said to Balak, you know, who God bless, I cannot curse. That's right. So let me tell you what you can do mm -hmm. in order to overcome right. these people. And he gave Balak a plan. He said, let some of your men yes. marry to some of their women. Oh my God, and what a plan. then train them mm -hmm. into certain things mm -hmm. like First. offering sacrifice yes you know and um so forth yes and uh, he told them what to do yes. commit fornication right and so he left but then Balak succeeded in getting some of his people mm -hmm. to intermarry oh my and God. to pass on some of their practices right and then of course 
he made some inroads into Israel. Wow, 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 wow. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So we have to be careful who we let in, no? And who we take in, in the name of Jesus. Because that thing spread. Yeah. So in light of this situation, Christ rebuked or condemned the church at Pergamos for tolerating those who, like Balaam, were leading people away from God. Let's be very careful. In this time and age, we have to be on the lookout for those among us who are being used by Satan to influence our people, particularly our young people. And I know some adults are in it too, bigger people are in it too, but particularly our young people. And some of them are not yet grounded in the faith. So they are easily shaken. May God help us and bless us with the spirit of discernment that we might be able to see and uncover some things which are affecting our people and leading them astray from the truth and help us to save them from the wrath which is to come. Mighty God, help us, Lord. All right, secondly, Jesus rebuked them about eating things offered to idols and for committing fornication. All right. It was Nicolate who taught that fornication and adultery were not sinful. Look at that now, people of God. And that eating meats offered to idols was lawful. Nothing was wrong with these acts, he says. This group actually taught and practiced this gross immoral living. They practiced free law, legalized fornication and adultery. And they were devilish and lewd in their manner of living. In addition to that, they practiced the eating of meats offered unto idols. Wow. As Christian believers, we should know who we keep company with. Can I repeat? We should know and be very careful who we keep company with. Some of the people around, they just lead us to do wrong things. The word of God calls us to separate ourselves from immoral living, from committing fornication and adultery and all the other sexual acts which are not right in the sight of God. God hates such things. And his power, my friend, is sufficient to bring deliverance to those who are now being controlled by sexual immorality. A word of warning here for those who are struggling in this regard. Hear what the word of God says. Let not sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sin. 1 Corinthians 6, 15 to 20 teach us that our body is the temple of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our body is the true spiritual temple and must be kept clean and pure so that the Lord can reside in us. Amen. Yes, we are under attack, severe attack by the enemy of the soul. But before we bow to his suggestions, we must consider the awful consequences. Consider also that God, the Almighty One, has trusted us with his grace and his power and his calling. Preserve these in the name of Jesus Christ. Preserve your grace, the power, and the calling that the Lord has placed on your life. All right. Thirdly, Christ commanded the church at Pergamos to repent. So he commended them and then he, he condemned them or rebuked them. And now he is commanding them to repent. This is what the verse says as verse 16. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. I love that verse so much. I like how the Living Bible renders this verse. It says, change your mind and your attitude or else
else, I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ expected the church to exercise discipline by removing those who were teaching contrary to apostolic doctrine. Remember, it's not everybody in the church who were caught in, in, these, in these vices. There are only some of them. Some were doing good because at first Christ was quite satisfied with how they were behaving. All right. Now, if we don't do that, refusal to do this would bring quick judgment. The Lord said, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And we, we need to understand what the sword of the mouth of the Lord is. And um, the sword of the, his mouth, of the mouth of Jesus, represents God's authority and judgment. Yes? There are three things worthy of note in this verse. The first thing Christ said is that the church should repent. They should turn from their sinful ways. Well, in this time of pandemic, I believe firmly that God is calling the church to repent. And I'm not saying you're doing what the, the people up there in, in Pergamos was doing that way back. But God is calling every one of us to repent. Praise the name of the Lord. Turn from those evil things that we are doing and turn back to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why God gives us the, the lockout. Uh, 2 Chronicles four, two, uh, 7 verse 14. That's one of the verses that has been going around all over the place. When God said we must humble ourselves, we must pray, we must seek the face of God, we must turn from or repent of our wicked ways. And then he said, when we do that, he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins, and he will heal our land. Do you want anything better than that? God wants us to act, and then he will do what he has to do. Now, Jesus said the believers in Pergamos should repent or else he would come unto them quickly hallelujah and quick them here meaning the church he would come to the church quickly and then he would fight against them fight against them those who were living contrary and he would fight against them how with the sword of his mouth which is the word of god Bishop, the word of God powerful, you know. It is. It is powerful, man. Any condition we are in, the word finds us. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we already know that the word of God is sharp. And we read that in Hebrews. It is sharp. It is active. It has power to overcome the enemy. It can shatter the kingdom of darkness. <clears throat> And I mean, anywhere you turn, the word of God can be effective. Problem is, we don't use it. Problem is, we don't go Bible study. Problem is, we don't connect with that. We chat everything else except the word of God. So God is saying to us, hey, God is going to judge us with the word. He's, he's showing us that the word is powerful. We must use it as his children. Can I get an amen over there? Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> Finally, verse 17 gives the caution from our Lord. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. Mighty God. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. I think some great things are in store for the children of God. Great things. All right. So what, what are hidden manna? Let me read it again. 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna. I will give the hidden manna to that one to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and in the white stone, a new name written. Ah, so, let us hear what the, uh, we have to say about that. Right, Bishop? All right. Hidden manna. You will remember when I say the word manna, that manna was provided for the children of God. I particularly like this one. Hidden manna suggests the spiritual nourishment which the faithful believers will receive. I want you to, to say something here. The children of Israel were going through the wilderness for 40 years. And what did God feed them with physically? Manna. Every day, except, except on what? Saturday? Every day, they would go out and pick up manna, enough for their household. Wow. And that was how they were kept. So God has some manna. Hidden manna suggests the spiritual nourishment. Out there in the wilderness, it was for their physical nourishment. This manna that the Lord is talking about is for our spiritual nourishment, which the believer receive and will receive. Reference to manna, we talk about that. God provided manna for the children of Israel to help them physically, and he is going to provide a spiritual nourishment for us to satisfy our deepest hunger. All right, so he said, I'm going to, you're going to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone. All right, what are the white stones? White stones were also used as invitations to important dinners. So when somebody is inviting you to a dinner as a special guest, they would give you a white stone. Now this coupled with the promise of manna indicates that those who overcome will participate in the Lord's great supper. Wow! That means future now, you know, future. We are looking ahead to that. Hallelujah. And on each of these white stones, there will be a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So the invitation is personal. Nobody will get my invitation. Nobody will get my white stone. I believe that this new name is that name which will be engraved on my invitation to the supper with the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Nobody can get my stone. It will be a personal invitation to that supper. So friend, up there, no devil can steal your invitation. Down here, people can tamper with your documents, <laughs> confidential as they are. Up there, there will be no scammers. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. How well the songwriter puts it. We shall have a new name in that land. In that land, that happy, happy land. So we're going to get a new name in the name of Jesus. And we're going to have that, that stone on it written a new name. Nobody has that name. And I believe, Bishop, that when the roll is calling, nobody will say, me name so too, you know. I saw me name too. Not at all. Everybody will have their own name. So there's no mix up up there in the name of Jesus. What do we say as we pull the curtains down? What do we say as we pull the curtains down? Boy, Jesus has so many good things up there waiting for us. We cannot afford to make no Nicolaitans and no devil worship and no, no, no fornication and no adultery and no sexual sins and all the things that we talk about. We cannot afford to let those things turn us, take us away from the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. We can't afford that now. And if you're in it or if you have done it, you need to just confess and, and, and ask God to forgive you and let's move on. God's grace is enough, man. God, the power in the blood of Jesus can erase every sin, every single one. So let us hold fast to Jesus. 
Let's not mess up or have our invitation to heaven canceled. Oh my God. Canceled. Yes. Jesus is preparing this new name and white stone for each of those who love and obey him. And finally, you're listening, but you are not a child of God. Stop now. Stop now and hand over your life to Jesus Christ in total surrender. He's waiting to change you. Thank you so much. God bless you. He's waiting to change you. Wait for your, wait for your new name. Wait for your, your pretty stone. Wait, <laughs> wait for that invitation. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming <coughs> soon. It's coming very, very soon. God bless you. Okay. And Thank when you, we come to deal with the history of the Christian church, yes, Lord. we will talk about which period is covered by this church yes. in Pergamum. Because mm -hmm. the seven Church. churches, each one cover a period of church history. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe we are now living in the last one, mm -hmm. the church of Laodicea. Laodicea. You're right. Wow. So, get ready for the ah, return hallelujah. of Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Or his coming can be any moment. Oh. Yes. Father thank in heaven, you, Lord. Thank you, we Lord. give you praise. Because you love us and you care. Hallelujah. You have fulfilled all the promises you made yes, to Lord. us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the pending promise Hallelujah. of the soon return of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, we know will come to pass. Hallelujah. When he comes to take us home. Hallelujah. Bless your word to the hearts of your people. Hallelujah. We pray thee, Lord, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Somebody said... A profound word. Yes. Yes. And blessings to both of you. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Dorit says sweet, sweet, sweet. Yes. Yeah. So persons are being blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And I love it that, you know, how that talks about the fact that I dress up today. Yes. <laughs> yes. The fact that um, it each church yes. represents mm -hmm. a period. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and but it also represents us. Oh, individuals. Us individuals. This yes. is, uh, yes. Yeah, this is uh, profound. This is yes. profound. Yeah. Yes. So which one is you? Which one is representing you? Oh my right. God! So I can't wait to get to learn. Right. Right. This, right. Right. this year is the to last church. Yes. Yes. Oh. yes. 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 Awesome. Praise God. Give it up for my parents. <laughs> my God mom does you. an excellent job. She brings the fire. And that brings the study and they work well together. Thank you, so, Lord. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that their books are available. Um, we'll soon upload Amazon. So Amazon, just hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. And um, those of you in Jamaica can get them at Kingston, Kingston Bookshop. Bookshop. Indeed. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great telephone evening. Yes. Spread the news around. We need to hear, and we're going to Thyatira the next time around. So you need to hear about that church as well. God bless you, and be close to you. Keep close to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. See you again. Amen.